Hello and welcome to Meet Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, February is Black History Month. Some big changes coming up in youth sports, and we take a look at the Adaptive Leader Soldier Training Program. These stories and more, but first an important reminder for everyone in the Fort Meade community. After two and a half years, the Mapes Road and Maryland 175 Access Control Point is set to reopen on Monday, February 29th. The gate hours will be Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And with the reopening of the Mapes 175 gate, the Llewellyn gate will be closed effective Friday, February 26th. For more information on operating hours at the access control points, go to the Fort Meade website at www.ftmead.army.mil. In other news, the Asymmetric Warfare Group, headquartered here at Fort Meade, has gone around the Army the last couple of years introducing what they call the Adaptive Leader Training and Education Program. Last week, Fort Meade Garrison Command Sergeant Major Rodwell Forbes met at Fort A.P. Hill in Virginia with other Area Command Sergeants Majors for the AWG training. Before we get to the Sergeant Major's comments, here's a brief introduction to ASLTE training courtesy of the Asymmetric Warfare Group. The Asymmetric Warfare Group's Adaptive Soldier Leader Training and Education Program is changing the Army's working and learning environment through innovation and teamwork while developing agile and adaptive leaders. We have the Strategic Studies Group here, who is a direct report organization to the Chief of Staff, and abiding by the ASALT principles, which is the Adaptive Soldier Leader Training Education model that we have here at the Asymmetric Warfare Group. We designed a series of classroom to field exercises for them to experience what the 21st century soldier competencies are and within a training day and protocol program, how to get them achieve that. So today, a newly formed group of people came and I think through a couple hours of experiencing the process and going through our methodology that we've taken a group and we've made them a team. To learn more about the Asymmetric Warfare Group, visit their website below. Command Sergeant Major Forbes says that the adaptive leader training is not just for soldiers. Not just how ASOL can positively influence not only the soldiers, but I'm looking at collectively soldiers, civilians, service members, because we are very diverse on Fort George G. Meade, Maryland. You know, uh, have all five services there, 53,608 people. Out of that 53,000, 14,000 roughly uh, service members and a huge DOD uh, population. So with assault training that takes place, you know, you put out the requirements for what the uh, service members or the civilians are supposed to do but you have the leeway or you give them the leeway, you know, to go above and beyond. And that's how we transform into the 21st century. In sports news, Child Youth and School Services Spring Youth Sports Registration is going on now. During the spring, Fort Meade fields teams in soccer, baseball, softball, and NFL flag football. Beyond the spring, the full 2016 youth sports lineup is undergoing some changes. Some sports are expanding, while others have seen sharp drops in participation. The biggest change, according to the CYSS Youth Sports Director Hunter Davis, it's the dropping of youth tackle football. You know, last year in Anne Arundel County, which we entered our teams, they saw, they ex excluding us, they saw a 30 percent decrease in the amount of teams entered into their league. Conversely, a couple of sports are being expanded, volleyball and lacrosse. We offered volleyball last fall and had a great turnout with the amount of girls and they were just asking for more volleyball when the seasons were over. The parents have been asking for it. Um, so we're going to look to start a, a beach volleyball league um, this summer. It'll be about a six week session and that'll kind of lead into the volleyball season in the fall. Um, and then we're also going to look to possibly keep carrying lacrosse over into the summer um, as well as dodgeball. Davis adds that participation in county leagues is entirely dependent on having enough volunteer coaches. We're a partner with the National Alliance of Youth Sports. Um, so we get the coaches info, we set them up with Nays. Nays sends them a training to do. Um, the, essentially they go through a training of just coaching and youth sports in general and then they also undergo a sports specific uh, training. One final reminder from the Garrison Equal Employment Opportunity Office. This year's Black History Month observance is hosted by one final reminder from the Garrison Equal Employment Opportunity Office. This year's Black History Month observance, hosted by the Defense Media Activity, is scheduled for Thursday, February 25th. The guest speaker is Dr. E. Faye Williams, the National Chair of the National Congress of Black Women. The program starts at 1130 in the McGill Training Center. For more information, you can contact the EEO office at 301-677-6687. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spen. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great Mead Week.